Hello students, welcome to Vyas Certification Quota. In this series of NCRT discussion, it is time to discuss and pick up a new chapter from NCRT class 12th. Class 12th Mathematics, we are beginning inverse trigonometric functions and today is the turn of exercise 2.1 as you can see behind me. Inverse trigonometric functions exercise 2.1. This is chapter number 2 and what all is important in inverse trigonometric functions interconversion of one trigonometric function into another that is something which is very important then other than that finding values of some special types of expressions that is t of t inverse and t inverse of t are some interesting questions other than that you should also be aware of properties of inverse trigonometric functions you should be aware of let us say simplifying tan inverse x plus tan inverse y that is one important result right tan inverse x plus tan inverse y when we take a look at this concept from the point of view of NCERT uh, there's there's a very little bit of information which is shared in case of ITF there are a lot of things which have been missed in the chapter ITF from the point of view of NCERT all of those things though are important in the JE discussion so with explanation of these questions over here I'll also explain the concepts involved if the question had been a JE question right we'll be discussing from the point of view of NCRD but we'll also explain the further details of the complete solution that may have been possible right here in NCRD the people talk about very limited kind of intervals very limited kind of intervals which are very perfect intervals that's what you can call them but all the imperfections are missed out very very easily they have missed out all they have skipped all of those important things all of those details and uh, that is one of the reasons that uh, we sometimes fall short on logic in case when we are dealing with NCRT as per NCRT only right so let's see let's begin with the first question and as we go ahead I'll explain all the details and all the difficult things to you as well Let's take a look at this first question over here. What does the question say? Find the principal values of the following. We're supposed to find the principal value of this. Sine inverse minus half. Now the way the sine inverse function has been defined is as explained over here. Take a look at this function. Y equals sine inverse x. This is the function sine inverse x. Okay. Here in the important thing is what's the domain of this function? domain is x lies from minus 1 to 1 this is a domain okay there's nothing special about the domain domain is simple but the range range has been picked from a lot of choices and we have chosen the principal values that's what you call the principal values we have chosen the range as minus pi by 2 comma pi by 2 so the output of this sine inverse x that is the values of y should lie in that interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 if they lie in that interval that's the codomain right that's the codomain right take that keep that in mind the value of y will not lie outside that interval keep that in mind once you know that much then you can deal with this sine inverse minus half now for what value of for what value of angle what for what value of angle lying over here will we get the value of sine equals minus half what do you mean by this is if sine inverse minus half equals theta this implies that sine theta will be equal to minus 1 by 2 and our target is to find this value that is the value of theta right if sine theta equals minus half you are supposed to find theta in that interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 let's draw the quadrants and analyze this equation right we have learned how to solve trigonometric equations in class 11th trigonometric equations were there in class 11th we have learned how to solve those things and if you are following this NCRT series from the very beginning we have already covered this trigonometric equations okay so for sin theta equal to minus half I'll first focus on sin theta equals half half is for pi by 6 that is 30 degree sin pi by 6 is 1 by 2 and for minus half I'll have to take a look at different different coordinates and see where is the value of sine cos negative all sine tan cos in the first and second quadrant sine is positive but in the third and fourth quadrant sine is negative so this pi by 6 or this pi by 6 will do okay now which of these angles are you going to choose do you want to choose for minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 you know that this is the interval in which sine inverse 
the output of sin inverse should lie. And once you know this much, yes, this is the angle that you are looking at, minus pi by 6. Since you are measuring it clockwise, this is a negative angle, this is minus pi by 6. Now, that is the logic behind this. How do you write it for the board people, for example? How do you express that? Let us see this. This implies sin theta is equal to minus sin pi by 6. Since half is sin pi by 6, right? And this can further be done as sin of minus pi by 6 since sin of minus theta is minus sin theta, right? This is what you have. And from here, I get that theta is equal to minus pi by 6, okay? So this is how you express. But every time writing this, every time guessing what to write over here is difficult. For that, we have this logic and this simple explanation. With the help of these quadrants, you can always go ahead and find the answer very easily. This is how you express the answer. That's your final answer for this question. That's the final answer for this question. Logic is this. This can be done in the rough. This is something which you can do very easily over here. Right? Keep this in mind and you'll be able to solve all the questions.